Hey everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Today we're going to talk about Founders Edition cards. So if you've ever wondered, what is a Founders Edition card, an FE card, what does that mean? Well, years ago, they called cards like this a reference card. Uh, AMD had cards that were uh, similarly uh, shaped. They would have a centrifugal fan on one end and they would blow the heat out the back of the card, which exited the case. Uh, actually a pretty nice design because it sucked the cool air in from inside the case and pushed the hot air out the back. And uh, again, these were called reference cards. Well, somewhere around the time NVIDIA launched the 10 series, the 1070s, 1080s, they started calling them uh, Founders Edition cards. And I know AMD called theirs reference cards also, but I don't know if they really refer to their uh, cards that they produce directly as Founders Edition or not. I guess they could. But anyway, uh, NVIDIA, when they design these cards, there is one uh, variation of uh, each card. So for example, a 4060 Ti is a 4060 Ti. There aren't any other variations of the 4060 Ti as a Founders Edition card from NVIDIA. So that is where your manufacturers like Gigabyte, MSI, ASUS, they come in and they take the basic designs from NVIDIA. Now they have to follow their standards and their specifications. They can't go hog wild and reverse engineer things. But they take uh, the basic foundation and then they build upon it. So you end up with additional features and functionality that you don't see on a Founders Edition card. So they customize it. And of course, when they do that, you get multiple variations of the same cards. So for example, this is an Asus 4060 Ti. There will be several different variations of the 4060 Ti from Asus. The same with MSI, the same with Gigabyte. This is a 4080 Supreme X from MSI. There are multiple versions of the 4080. And we see the same thing across all the other cards today with the 50 series. Uh, the exact same thing. So the manufacturer takes the basic NVIDIA design, they design their own PCB, they design their own voltage regulation system, they design their own cooling solution, the fans, uh, they add RGB effects, they have custom software that controls and manages the graphics cards, uh, controls fan speed, and these typically have a, uh, a tweaked clock speed, so the performance is a little bit higher because the clock speeds, again, are a little bit higher than usually what you see on a Founders Edition card. And of course, all of those extras uh, on your add-in cards, some people call these AIBs or add-in boards, but AIC, AIB, uh, you pay a little bit more for these too, sometimes a lot more, because you're getting more. So I've got one here off the shelf. This is an older card from NVIDIA, Founders Edition. I've got a sweet spot for this card. This, in my opinion, is one of the nicest looking graphics cards that NVIDIA has made. I don't know why, there's just something about this card that I really like. This is a 2070 Super. I love the chrome faceplate there, the silver accents on the sides. Uh, I love what they did to the back, it's really clean. Cool card. I've kept it around all these years now. I like it so much I just can't part with it. So I'm going to hang on to it. Plus being a pack rat <laughs> doesn't help. Now here's a cool example of something extra that Asus has done with a 4060 Ti. So this is your 4060 Ti. Uh, however, if you look at the back, it's got something a little different. And if that looks like an M.2 slot to you, well that's exactly what it is. So on your lower end cards, you've got a little extra bandwidth that you're not using. So rather than just leave it on the table, uh, Asus figured out, well, we can take some of that extra bandwidth and we can use that for an additional M.2 SSD card. So that's what they've done. You're basically sharing the bandwidth, the additional extra bandwidth that you're not using for the graphics card and you're using it for an SSD. And this is the only card that I've seen anybody do anything like that with it. So I don't know if it's just a little novelty. Uh, it's just a one and done thing on the 40 series. Or if we'll see a 5060 maybe with that function, that feature. Who knows? So to summarize, your Founders Edition cards are the standard stock cards that are designed 
by NVIDIA, sold through NVIDIA. Of course, you can get these at Newegg and Amazon too, but you are add-in cards, your add-in boards, manufactured by your third-party manufacturers like Asus, Gigabyte, MSI. They add to the card additional features and functionality, usually a little higher clock speed, so you get a little better performance. Sometimes you get massive heat sinks, additional fans, RGB effects, software that controls the fans, and you can see what's going on with the card. Uh, you get something like this in some cases, which is really odd, but also really cool, an additional solid state drive. That comes in handy, I guess, if you've got a motherboard and you're uh, limited on your M.2 slots, so you can throw an extra one in there. Another advantage that your third-party manufacturers have is that since there are so many variations uh, and multiple manufacturers producing these, these are much more plentiful. These are going to be a lot easier to get than your Founders Edition. These can be in short supply sometimes. If you go to any of these manufacturers' websites, Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, for example, and look at the graphics cards they have, you'll see a huge variety of 4060s, 4070s, 4080s, 4090s. And now that NVIDIA has released the 5090, pretty soon here we're going to start to see the different variations from all of your different manufacturers of the 50 series. So now you should have a better understanding of the differences between a reference card, a Founders Edition card, and an add-in card. So this is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.